Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of Cat Meets. And this one's a little bit of a special one today. Um, a little bit of a comparison. We've got two cars involved with this. Uh, and it all started off at a show I went to recently where I filmed these two cars together. Um, one of the owners got in touch and said that he'd be up for doing a feature video. So we tracked down the second owner and we managed to find a date which worked and a location. And we all got together um, and had a couple of hours filming and chatting about our awesome cars. So me and Cat made our way up to Canic Chase, um, met up with Dan and with Nick. Um, and today's video is all about family estate because we're all family men we all like to get our kids out and about um, in our classic cars we want to keep alive our passion for cars for classic cars for fast cars and taking them to shows and things like that um, so it's absolutely awesome to meet up with Nick and with Dan um, have a little look over their cars have a little ride in their cars um, so I really hope you enjoy this special episode of Cat Meets with Nick, Dan, Paul Cortina and a Ford Focus roll the intro <music> Hey guys then, I made it to uh, Canuck Chase and we found a nice little spot just to introduce the guys to you uh, and there's the cars. So this is Dan uh, and this is Nick, the owners of these two lovely estate cars um, behind me um, and one of the reasons that we wanted to get together today um, was a previous video, uh, the Ford show at Santa Pod. If you haven't seen it already, it's on my channel, I'll leave you uh, a link in the description below. Um, but I got a shot of these two cars together um, just as a bit of a sort of now and then sort of um, look at estate Fords, which I thought was a really nice little shot. Uh, Nick saw my video and then he said, hey, let's get together, do some more videoing. So, so here we are, we've managed to, we've managed to track Dan down um, and we've got together now uh, on a fairly drizzly day, but it um, it's, should be all right, shouldn't it? I reckon, yeah. the rain will hold off. Um, so Nick, first up, why classic cars? You're a classic, classic car man. So uh, I've group around old Fords and old Land Rovers because of my dad. And, yeah. uh, I came across the old minis and I've had one for that past seven years so uh, I love everything about them. Yeah, know, the, yeah. old, the old mechanics where you can actually get involved with your car uh, rather than, okay, I like, I like my estate and like the... The uh, estate is awesome, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and I like, you know, you jump in, push the button, but then can't they do anything with it without having to get a computer involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's a, yeah. That's a, I think that's the general gist of a lot of people's kind of orientation towards classic cars isn't it so you've got a mini at the moment yeah i've got a 1970 hatred very very early mark three yeah uh, still got a lot of mark two features like they still got a sensor ignition the actual mark three's got an ignition on the column okay yeah, yeah. and it's got a uh, mark one feature like this it's got the uh, it's got no side features on the wings and stuff. yeah so i'm trying to find one now yeah it hasn't been <laughs> molested, you know, yeah, it hasn't yeah, been yeah. modified or anything like that yeah you know it's only a bog standard 850 but you just can't find them anymore yeah they're a lot of fun, and I think yeah. like a lot of people you talk to. I mean, classic Fords is is one thing that people talk about, but Minis is just it's, it's just one of someone's cars dream cars at some that point. Everyone knows. Yeah. You see, come down the street, no matter if it's a, a kid or, a, or, a, or an elderly person, yeah, they know yeah. what a Mini is, and know what it looks like, know yeah. what it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> Dan, what about yourself? Uh, grew up around cars, same with my dad and my older brother. Yeah. Always had Escorts. Um, I did have an Escort at one point, but I never finished it and sold it. Yeah, and yeah. I bought the Cortina instead, which, yeah. which my dad helped me find. What, what, what mark was your Escort that you had? Uh, I had a Mark One Escort Estate. Oh, I never nice. finished, never actually got it on the road before I finished it. I thought it was finished. You know, I put bubble arches on it, Z Tech in it. Yeah, yeah. Entering port fires, but never finished it. Yeah. I sold it and put the money into the Cortina. Yeah. After I got that, which was supposed to be a quick. Yeah. <laughs> as many restorations are <laughs> uh, that's what we tell our, our missus anyway isn't it yeah, it's yes. be fine with it, so. So, how, how long have you had the uh, the cortina um just over eight years now uh I spent about three years doing it though yeah so it's only been on the road five and a bit years yeah pulled that out of the garage i was actually going to bang erase it when we first bought it were you uh that was the plan for it but i fell in love with it <laughs> The rest of the history. Yeah, yeah. I know you, you quite like your banger racing, don't you? But yeah. the, the idea of banger racing a Mark III Cortina well, yeah. estate is the, uh... garage where, <laughs> the garage where it was. We got the hook uh, from the winch on the from the truck. We put it on the arch and we pulled it out by the back arch. Did you? Yeah, yeah. So in the end, I had to buy a whole new rear quarter for it because we wrecked because the rear quarter. Because you dragged it out. Uh, <laughs> oh, but it wasn't a bit of a mess when I got it. Yeah, yeah. It's absolutely a beautiful car, isn't it? Uh, and I think it's just set off perfectly. Like, I just liked it because it's different. Yeah. There's we were saying earlier there. actually how, how rare they are, you yeah. just don't see them about the, the, the estates. The um, especially space. not done up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So Nick, what, when, when did you get the ST then? When did you get the uh, Focus? Last July I bought it. Uh, 
gets that point. Family, family was getting getting bigger, and we just needed another car. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but rather than buying another, average size hatchback, I wanted an estate. Wanted to you know, try to something to play with as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or looking at other car, or other other estates on the market. And it was a little bit boring, and then this one came about, and yeah. Yeah. If not, I want to have to. Be. It's got a hell of a presence on the road, actually. I think yeah. the, the Focus ST. Yeah. And especially the state, I, I think, because it, it's personal preference. But we've all kind of been chatting I before about the fact the that state this is a, looks better than the hatchback. Yeah, 100%. yeah, yeah. And and one of the reasons we I originally saw these two cars and, and wanted to film them, um, but also I think these two guys both got these cars is is for the family aspect of it. So we, I think we've all got fairly young families. Yeah. Um, and I love the fact that my car's got four seats and I can take them to and from, but it's not practical by any stretch. <laughs> so just to have a classic estate like that or a fast estate like that, I think is absolutely awesome. Check your kids and your dog in and still get 0 to 60 in six seconds is just, oh, it's just wicked. It's an absolutely quality idea, isn't it? So it's, um, have you done anything to the Focus at all? Not really, the engine wise is pretty standard. Yeah, it's, not, yeah. it's, not, it's not even got a FOC. Not there's any that. reason to do anything, by the way. It's no. a freaking fantastic the, car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just cosmetics, you know, uh, put the mud guard on there from Valley Flaps. Yeah. And uh, some, just some, done the gas, yeah, bon yeah. gas truck conversion for the bonnet, so the bonnet will drop down on me when I'm playing. Yeah, nice. Uh, <laughs> and essential, I'd say. Essential, yeah. <laughs> and then just uh, change the puddle lights and change the maps for the ST logos and put some uh, ST uh, yeah, yeah. striker plates on the, on the door jams. Yeah. Um, other than that, it's standard. And yours is the ST? The ST3. Three. So, uh, Full Recaro's front and rear, yeah. uh, black headliner. Uh, we'll have a look later. Other bits, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's just and the, the the one, two, and three are all the same ages and stuff. It's just a trim all the same level. Same, trim I think level. it's just the trim level. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. So they all put out the same sort of, same sort of power. Yeah. Uh, it's just the level of trimming sound. Yeah. And then the Cortina, it's not. Quite it's, so standard. Yeah, there's nothing, nothing really standard. Nothing about standard about it. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a badass estate. <laughs> so, so, what did it start off with? What engine was in um, there? It was originally a 1600 cross flow. Yeah. Obviously, used in it. I took that out and I did put a 2.9 Cosworth engine in it originally. Then I took did that you? Bike out, so did like you have it. that running? Uh, never had it running in it. <laughs> And that would have been I bought a 2316 valve in it. <laughs> yeah. I had a standard ish one on the road for a bit. Then I bought a full race engine one from one of my friends. Yeah, yeah. And Thanks. have you had it dyned? Uh, yeah, it's done 240 brake horsepower. Nice. Easily matched That is a. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, it's yeah. naturally aspirated, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 It's on all well, steel rods, forged pistons, yeah, big yeah. cams, on throttle bodies. A lot of work. We'll have a little chat about engines, I think, a little bit later when we get some more shots of that as well. But anyway, that is Stan and Nick, and that is two absolutely beautiful uh, Ford estates uh, from two different eras. We're going to go and take a few more shots. We're going to get a few more on the on the road as well, and we'll crack on chatting over the next couple of hours all about these absolutely wicked cars. We'll catch up with you later. Where we were heading, which is this nice little roundabout right next to some cooling towers. Which aren't there anymore. Would have made a good backdrop for some photos, but um, we're going to move on to the next location and we'll catch up with you in a bit. Alrighty then, uh, made it to a nice car parking spot. Uh, we've got the bonnets open, so we thought a good chance just to have a little bit of a chat um, about each of the sort of engine bays 
Uh, originally 16 crossflow. 16, and was that the original engine for the car? Yep, yeah. I got the factory with that. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. was C solid, so yeah, it's yeah. come out. And I put a 2316 valve in. And you didn't quite get I know the... these engines quite well. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So was that the main reason for going with the with the 23? The, the, yeah. You know them and, yeah, I was and use, love them. I was using these for banger racing, so I had quite a few of them. Oh, okay, and, of course, and, yeah, yeah. And uh, built a few of them, so yeah, that was yeah. the main reason, really. Yeah. So what did this what did this actual engine come out of? Uh, this is these are it's a Scorpio engine out of the Frog Eye Granada. So what was it in terms of um, getting the engine in the engine bay? Uh, was it a tricky job? Was there much to do? Uh, just we're talking make, engine make mounts and make some mounts and stuff. Uh, it's on aftermarket ECU and stuff now to run the injection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I did you it. start it off on carbs? I had it on carbs originally on yeah. 45s. Um, then I went to a big single Weber and then I changed it to throttle bodies afterwards. Now you've got these bad boys. Uh, and what ECU are you using? It's on Omex 600 with the Omex throttle bodies bought it as all kit. Okay, nice. Yeah. Uh, just made my own little manifold for it. And was that something that you'd done on banger racing cars? Yeah, I've made in little so stuff in the past. Sort of yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. And then what uh, gearbox did you use? Uh, it's got a five speed type nine in it. Okay, is that bolt straight up or is that? Yeah, bolt straight on. Amazing. Luckily, Ford kept all the same yeah. bolt patterns yeah, and yeah. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so it's relatively easy. Yeah. Was there any stupidity? I'm only thinking out the back of my head, ST170 has got the water pump in the wrong place for the bulkhead and stuff like that. Did you have to do anything? Um, on a Scorpio, on these originally, they've already got a blanking plate on the back. Oh, they okay. run, they're a rear wheel drive engine anyway. Of course they are, yeah, yeah. Um, it's still on all like, the original Scorpio alternator, water pump, everything. Yeah, yeah. So there's no messing about with alternator or making brackets or buying brackets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's got a big wing sump on it now to hold more oil. Yeah. It's a race engine it now and then, but originally it did have the Scorpio sump on it on my old engine. And that fitted? Yeah, it fit with it anyway. Fitting fine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, and you've dynoed it at 240. Yeah, nearly right? 240 it was. 240. That is a hectic amount of power for a fairly light car. And you were saying earlier when we were down having a quick bite to eat that you've got um, Transit. Yeah. Mark. Mark II. Mark II Transit, and you've got one of these engines in that as well. One of them engines in that as well, yeah. Nice. And was, uh, what sort of horsepower is that? Um, that's just on a carb, probably about 160 brake horsepower, something yeah, okay. like that. So they're very similar in terms of colour, and you have this on the trailer on the back of the Mark II Transit, which did look badass uh, in the pictures. So Pretty happy with it at the moment. Yeah, I'd yeah. like to get it clean, because obviously I'd, I don't clean it, I use it and abuse it mostly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the best way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in this instance, I guess you've done pretty much every nut and bolt yourself. Yeah. So you know, it's, it's better it's better used than abused. Yep. And if it twangs, then you know you know which bolt to do. Yep, <laughs> That's absolutely awesome. Alrighty then, onto the uh, the modern machine. Uh, Focus ST. Yeah. So this is a four cylinder. Four cylinder. Um, turbocharged. Yep. And what um, power do these? Two four seven. Two four seven. That's what the book says. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but they're very easily very easily tuned. Yeah, you can do some pretty basic like ECU chips even and just stuff a, just to even get Even just out. an easy flash, you'll get through the brake easy. Yeah, yeah. Easy. Um, but I'd love to just send it off to Mount Tune and say, hey, our lads, yeah, lads, <laughs> you know. So if you're watching Mount Tune, do you your know. worst. <laughs> Two forties are, are pretty. It's in a front wheel drive car. Yeah. There's something that weighs this weighs you know, two and a half ton with me in it. It's about trying to get that power down yeah. uh, and also usable. And we sp I've spoken about quite a bit in terms of tuning the Capri. Uh, sort of where to stop with the power because if you if you can get a really nice balanced car you're you're in a far better position than having too much power for the handling or the yeah. braking and that sort of stuff anyway aren't you so I mean for them to chuck out an, an engine at that power you know it's going to have been tested to manufacturers specifications it's going to be a reliable amount of power as well isn't it Absolutely. and um, yeah, yeah hell of a drivable machine yeah, I'll, I'll love it. Um, it anything I point out when I'm saying for safety when someone's being spirited um, Sticks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's still on its original Goodyear front tyres, so yeah, a, a, a good tyre set up underneath, it won't move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you got any plans? Do you fancy doing a, um, a cheeky chip or? A yeah, yeah, definitely in the future. Um, definitely by the time we go to the Ford show next year. Yeah. Uh, it's going to have a pod filter uh, and an intake system upgrade, uh, and then it's definitely having the rear engine mount across the always on the strip at the last uh, at the last Ford show. Um, Getting a bit of wheel hop, so uh, okay. uh, definitely going to upgrade that yeah, uh, yeah. to the cob um, yeah. rear engine mount setup, and then dress the engine bay up really. Try and keep it nice and supple, you know, keep keep it nice and clean. Because I think 
many all electric stuff starts coming in, this is going to be worth something one day. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, Definitely. yeah. yeah. So you don't see many of them about. You know, the, the, all the hatchbacks that are running about. So. Yeah. Have you been on the track? You took I've it never on been the... on track. I've only ever been on the strip with it. Just on the sand spots. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be wicked to take this on the track. I bet it'd be amazing. I bet it'd be really, really nice. Uh, in the seats, with it, you, you'll go nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> you're strapped in. <laughs> you're strapped in. Those seats hold just so nice. Well, two absolute weapons. Um, very different in a few ways, but they are both family wagons with a fair amount of power um, to keep you entertained and keep the smiles on your faces, that's for sure. So um, I reckon at this point we'll, um, if you guys don't mind, jump in and have a little, have a little go. Okay. Drive about. <laughs> Sweet. So we're out and about, um, just having a little ride in the Cortina, Dan's Cortina. Uh, and it is spacious. I mean, it is definitely an old estate, isn't it? Yeah. You've got uh, the backs of the seats are about as sort of getting on for the height of your shoulders. And there's loads of room and visibility is mental. It's an um, old school looking machine. Some really cool dials in there. And we're just saying, a few um, cracking little eBay finds and stuff like the carpet you were saying was uh, how much? 25 quid. 25 quid. And it looks really clean, really nice. <laughs> Dan was saying it's in it's in usable condition, which I think is a fair it's a it's a fair position. It's where, where I kind of pitch the Capri as well. There's there's a few jobs and stuff you want to do to tidy it up here and there, but you're yeah. pretty happy with how it is. Yeah, it? I think it's some filter and fuck on. Anyone been yeah. able to do that for about three years? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just never got round to it. Yeah, but it's noisy. It's noisy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not. Rattly car old noisy, that is awesome fast engine noisy, that makes a hell of a growl mate. Yeah. And a pop. <laughs> you must be pretty chuffed with this. Yeah, yeah, I love it. It's one of those cars I'd never sell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. video on the um, turbocharged ST170 that is a turbo noise but this <laughs> this is a different kettle of fish altogether naturally aspirated 2.3 throttle bodies 240 horsepower I, I mean you can't get much better than that and as we said a few times today it's about getting the kids and the family and the dog in a cool car uh, if there was something classic to do that in it's a Mark III Cortina surely you've had a couple of um, magazine Articles and the yeah. photo shoots, haven't you? Yeah, the Yeah. Well, about three years ago now, I Oh, it's just amazing, but I think if I can uh, get a smile on my face this much from the ST sorted in my car, it's going to be amazing. I don't think they were ever made to be like a super power engine, just a bit of a plodder, but yeah. they're, they're quite easy to tune. Yeah, yeah. And like you say, if you've been, if you've been working on them, and with them, with your with your banger rakes and stuff already, yeah, yeah. And I guess you know exactly what to do with them and that sort of stuff. All the teething issues and stuff yeah. as well. That is awesome. What a machine! Well, I'm going to jump over and have a little crack in this um, in this ST estate now. So we're going to catch up with Dan uh, in a little moment back of the uh, back of the cars. Yeah. Rightio, swapped over. We're in the uh, the ST <clears throat> again. A state monstrosity that we know about uh, and super nice interior. This is the one of the upgrades of the ST3. You were saying, wasn't it? Yeah, it's got the black, black headline, headline and leather, leather car seats and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, stop, I think many options that hasn't got. It's got the version cam here, all the sensors all around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> blissing winter, pushes buttons, defrost everything for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Heat They've got screen. a patent on heated windscreen, haven't they, Yeah, yeah. It's incredible. Got options that other comparable estates uh, of other manufacturers don't have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think where this car comes into its own is the fact that you can drive it like 
quietly and sensibly. Yeah, that's all sensible. Yeah, yeah. And if you want to be a yob, park into the line. And as all Fords, they like to be, well, this is special like from Ford driving Ford. Yeah, that's where yeah, it likes yeah. to be. Yeah. Is that where you get the most turbo yeah, coming through as well? Yeah, that's where the most power comes through. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> you can it's feel that kick, can't you? You can feel it push you back Here in the goes. seat. Yeah, you can. <laughs> oh, it's nice. And it goes pretty well up to six and a half, then. Uh, yeah, I've, I've, had it, I've had it touch seven. Yeah, yeah. Well, on, on the strip at centre five. Yeah. Gordon Bennett, that does push you back, doesn't it? Yeah. That is nice. Accessible power. Accessible. Accessible power. It's anything you can get to is plenty in something that's front over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you feel on um, uh, like Santapod strips and stuff, you can properly feel the torque steer coming through and stuff when you're yeah. proper hooping it? Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. Uh, it's quite a handful when, when you're piling it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with it being on a tra track as well, that really helps to try and keep the grip, try and keep some grip. Yeah. Um, but only on only on certain track, or untracked tracks. It's, yeah. But then it's not out of control. You just learn the characteristics of the car. So it, it, it isn't a two and a half tons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but then you can't be pops and bangs after an old after an old engine. Yeah. You know, I you, mean, there's you, different there's differences in terms of the presence and stuff, though, isn't there? Like, yes. I think especially with the classic Fords because and the, and the minis. Everybody's it, dad had one. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And everybody's granddad had one. You know, it's what. People our generation know. <laughs> that is brilliant, isn't it? It's mental that you get that push back in your seat, yeah. and then as soon as you leave, leave, leave off the accelerator, it feels it falls straight back into being a nice, comfortable car. <laughs> <laughs> and then you look down, you're doing 120 miles an hour. <laughs> oh crap! <laughs> Ultimate dad wagon. Ultimate dad wagon. I think you're right. That's it, I'm gonna get one. Box all's gone, no look. Yeah. <laughs> what a machine. It's awesome. And then it's all just going, no, no, it's a fire. Yeah, yeah. You can drive it. Similar. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. It's a nice place to sit, the seat's all nice. They are really, really comfortable, aren't they? Aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I love them. And then you get these extra gauges. The first gauge is my favourite. I found myself watching that quite often. Yeah, that's a lot of fun, that, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Thanks a lot for the ride. That's amazing. Hi there, guys. We've had a good look around, a little run, um, and loads and loads of clips uh, and pictures of both the Cortina and the Focus today. Um, it's been absolutely awesome to catch up with Nick and with Dan. Um, from the um, Santa Pod show that we went to a little while ago and we were saying it'd be awesome to try and get the cars back together again at some point um, and they're both planning on going to the Ford show next year I think yeah, so I'm going to chuck that in the calendar and hopefully we can meet up with them there if um, if not before that'd be absolutely awesome um, but it's been an absolute pleasure to meet up with you a bit of um, car banter chatter and uh, and have a little ride in the cars a massive thanks um, to Nick for coming out also for coming up with the idea for this video um, which is an absolutely cracking idea um, and then Dan also for coming out as well coming and meeting us uh, making it all the way over here to um, to Canuck. so thanks so much guys um, safe drive home I'm going to catch up with you guys in a little bit for a little bit of an outro um, so until next time Nick and Dan take it easy yeah. Cheers. thank you very much <laughs> take it easy buddy Take it easy, Nick. So what a cracking day that was. It was absolutely awesome to meet up with Dan and with Nick and see their fast forwards um, from then and from now to estate wagons, um, both 
awesomely practical, amazingly fast, and a lot of fun. Um, you'll probably see these two guys out and about um, over the season next summer, especially um, when it all kicks off again. Social media links I'll leave in the description below for both of those people if you want to go and see um, a bit more about their sort of cars and stuff like that. Um, both absolutely fantastic fellas and really, really nice cars. I just want to say a massive shout out and a thanks to you guys for coming out, bringing the cars out and um, putting up with my antics, filming um, for that for the day. It's been absolutely amazing uh, and a bit of a testament to social media really in terms of tracking Dan down, um, us lot all getting together um, and just sharing a passion and enthusiasm for classic cars, fast forwards um, and that sort of stuff. It's just absolutely brilliant. The amount of people I've met now um, kind of through doing this YouTubing stuff has just been absolutely brilliant. So thanks so much to everybody. Um, you guys all for getting involved, commenting, liking, sharing all my bits and pieces um, and also getting in touch on social media as well. It's been absolutely brilliant. So I'm going to leave you with a couple of different videos. The first one will be just an explanation of what happened on that Sunday afternoon after meeting with Dan and Nick to Kat, which is the reason that she's been off the road. I'll pop that video for you right here. Um, and because of that, there's going to be quite a lot more garage time coming up over the winter. So I'll pop you here, the playlist for the garage time that I've been doing. So so far and everything else up to come and then here there's gonna be a little button if you press that it will subscribe you to the channel it's great to have you along guys i hope to see you on a future episode until next time drive safe